All right, so we talked um, last week with the grant stuff, right? Uh, for the personal use. Yeah. Right? Um, so we'll, we'll have a form for that. We'll release it back to you for your own personal use. Okay. The tallow, we talked about that as well. We're just going to give that back to you and allow you to sell. There won't be a form or anything with that. It just essentially is this no longer any tan. We'll physically remove that. And I don't know how we have that tagged upstairs, but um, if it's physically tagged, we'll remove the tag and you're, you can do what you need to do with that. Okay. The powders, uh, we got word back late Friday um, from our policy folks that we're going to exercise some discretion there. So the intent from that product, for that product, right, was um, essentially for, for supplements, not yes. tech supplements. Yes. We're going to allow you to do that okay. with those supplements. Um, any idea how long it would take you to go through that inventory, the current inventory? Estimate. You're saying you want me to basically get rid of it as quickly as possible? Or? No, no, no. I, I'm just looking for an estimate. You know, six months, eight months, a year. Like it, what's it's supposed to be done in. I was actually doing a liquidation because it wasn't doing so well. So okay. I was trying to get rid of most of the product within two months. Okay. And that's fine. We're not going to hold you to, like, you know what I mean? It's not like, yeah, you only have two months. Um, well, to get those, rid of, those, 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 those. Those um, suppliers don't seem interested in selling to me anymore, anyway. So it looks like I'm going to sell all the products within about two months. Okay. And that'll be that'll be that. that all right. Will, and yeah. And that's for uh, dietary supplements only, as far as the pem pemmican. Um, you know, we had talked a little bit about maybe doing a dog food pemmican or things like that. Yeah. Um, which would mean labeling it. You can label it as you know, animal pemmican, dog pemmican. Mm -hmm. You know. However, you choose to label it with the yeah. species of the pet or just pet pemmican, mm -hmm. um, you know it should be continuous to the label. You know it's not like, and, and we're just looking that it doesn't say, um, you know, pemmican in big letters and these tiny little letters, you know, for dogs. You know yeah, what I mean? no, it's, it's, I will. I will make sure it says pet treat on yeah. it and very clear, not for human consumption. And then the other side of that coin is the denaturant, um, mm -hmm. in which, which, you know, for that powder, it's either you can mix charcoal into the powder, or um, the other option I sent you, the, the regulation on that, is to mix it with bone meal, uh, or crushed bone, and there's certain specifications and things like that, and you could, I, I assume, could find crushed bone there is, online. There is bone. Okay. It, it's already, there is ground bone in the, in the boneless beef powder right now. Does it mix, but that's more of a powder versus and an actual? Not, well, that's, have you looked at that product? It's I not have not. Real, it's not really a powder, it's like, Okay. Clumpy. It's not really. Okay. Maybe we can take a look when we're done. Um, but I gave you the ranks on that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a certain size, you know, mesh and everything like that. So um, if you're gonna uh, make it into a, a pet treat or something like that, make sure you meet that criteria. Like I said, either denatured or decharacterized. You know, and, and I give you a whole list of, of what we consider denatured. Um, you know, more than likely, the best option is either charcoal or the or the bone, you know, the bone crushed bone. Yes. Um, but yeah, the pemmican can't be for, for human food. Um, mm -hmm. And we had talked about that. So that's, I mean, at least good news for you there. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else on that side. I think that's it for that. Um, and then uh, we can talk about the stuff from Byler. Um, I sent you the stuff and, and I kind of knew you weren't going to, uh, you know, I, I I assume you'd be dis you were disappointed with, with what I said. Well, last Friday in the conversation we had, you said, you know, you weren't so sure what they were going to say, mm -hmm. but send me a customer list and you can probably, we can probably release it and you can probably sell it through the farm share. For personal, right. I, I didn't say for the farm share. I, I, well, distribute it through use. the farm share. I wasn't sure about that. You know, yeah, you right. said you, you. There was always a possibility. I wanted to get the information for you so I could, I could get it to our policy yeah. folks or legal division and get you an appropriate response. Mm -hmm. uh, what I sent you is that response. Um, you see, I assume this is the email I sent you, uh, and it kind of breaks down, you know, the custom, what we mean by custom, what's allowed, as, as far as- So where, where is order. this, where is this information listed? You know, can I, can I? Yeah. yeah. So um, if you see, um, when we go off the acts, right, and you look at the Federal Meat Inspection Act, and, and this is primarily meat, right? It's not poultry. Right, no poultry yeah. just means. So I'll, I'll just talk about beef and pork. Yeah. Um, in the act, there's um, exemptions, exemptions for custom, and there's certain 
somewhat general guidelines in the act for customers. I just want to clarify. Right? So the, 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 this answer you gave me pertaining to private membership association, this is not officially in any sort of document. This is kind of an issue that is addressed on a like uh, specific basis by case the FSI. Case. Right. So we've never what you're proposing, you know, is inconsistent with the acts and the regulations. Okay. Uh, so we have the acts, we have the regulations, and then our policy folks gets into the nitty gritty and, and kind of looks at certain scenarios and say, you know, whether that's in compliance with um, the act or it's not. And, and in your case, it, it, it wasn't consistent with what we allow as far as custom. So the customer base purchased the live animal and owns it with their money. The meat is sent to me to be distributed to the members and then they pay the rest of their share. That was, now you're telling me that's not allowed. Right, and we had talked, cause I, I was getting a little confused as the scenarios we were talked about last week. Um, and that's why I asked you, just put me in writing so I can get you a solid answer. The custom, you know, and I, and I put that all in, in the email. Custom is at the simplest, you go somewhere with an animal or you buy an animal from the farmer, the farmer slaughters it for you, you pay for that service of, of the slaughtering. You're not buying meat, right? And that is for your exclusive use, um, non-paying guests, family, so on and that's, so forth. Yeah, but that's not really as, relevant as, to the as, private membership. As, it, as, as it's basic, okay, right? Now, policy, and there's no thing, you're not going to find it in the act that you can have more than one owner, blah, 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 but, um, you know, we do allow more than one owner, and I, I went into specifics on the email of an animal, you know, whether it's four people, eight people, what have you, but you still have to have that transaction that, let's say it's eight people, they're buying a live animal. They've made a transaction for a specific animal or animals. You know, you as the agent arrange to have it slaughtered, you bring back the meat, you distribute it evenly amongst the eight, which is a little different from what you're doing. And and you talk about, you know, the sausage, um, you know, because obviously the sausage, you, you start commingling the whole animal. Like the that. whole animal was made into sausage. Okay, that was how it was to be distributed. Okay. That was for it was for the ease of distribution. Right. The shares are all. So if it's, you know, if it's a hundred dollars for share, each person is getting ten pounds of of, all, right. of, of the. They're not ordering a specific product, they're getting a share. So they're going to get, you know, three. everyone's going to get the same three pounds of this, three pounds of this, three pounds of this. Right, but not all 1,500 people on that list. I mean, it's, it's in order to do that, those people would have to have purchased a specific animal. Mm -hmm. You know, through you, Frankie, not through Frankie's Free Range, not through the company, you know, so on and so forth. Um, they'd have to buy a specific animal. Mm -hmm. And then it gets distributed. Okay, you know, so you're uh, you're you're saying you're saying what me. what I wanted to do through distributing the meat through the private membership association, where the meat has been privately owned throughout the entire period of t of time, that's not allowed. Because you're saying it's owned by the membership. It's owned by the people that paid. My understanding of the private membership association is people can buy into the private membership association, and when they pay that fee that can be applied to the purchase of the live animal for the customers and then they can have the meat distributed right. to them. Which isn't consistent with, with the regulations, with the act, uh, which says, you know, you have to, those people would have to buy that specific animal. You know, of that 1,500, let's say the customer, let's say for simplest sake, there's 100 You're customers. saying instead of the members of the private membership association paying a fee allocated towards the animal, those customers have to have a specific interaction with me. I have to get all 50 people at once to pay a separate fee for the live animal when it's slaughtered. Yeah, and they don't have to pay you right there and then. You know what I mean? It, it's that's the payment end is, is a little different, but yes, they have to agree to purchase that. So animal when I made a video a few months ago before I did this, me and my customers had an agreement that we were going to get these products and people were going to purchase them. I, but I, you're saying there needs to be some sort of written record between each there customer. There needs to be records, yeah. yeah. But prior to slaughter. Okay. So I'm assuming your final verdict on this product is that it can be released to me for personal use. If that's what you choose, yes. Okay, so the problem I have with that is 
that there are, I can, I'm not naming them, I'm not going to say them, but I have them on this paper, uh, at least four or five other businesses in the New York area that are, they're not selling shares. They're selling retail, custom, not federally inspected meat on mm -hmm. their websites. They're not selling shares. There's four or five of them. They've made way, they have way more customers than me. They've sold way more meat than me. They are not adhering to these rules by any extent. They're, they just have, I have my customers, we agreed to purchase the live animal. We agreed to have all the sausages, whatever, all products slaughtered at that time, evenly distributed as a share. That's what we agreed upon with my customer base. These people that you that have been operating for longer than me and that have been in business longer than me have been selling retail, not federally inspected meat on their website to their customers with no, no, it, you're, you're basically, I'm being, I'm way closer to these rules and these regulations than these people are, but you, you have not been bothering these people. You can go on their website, you can sign in, you can place an order for a steak, a ground beef, a piece of meat, whatever you want. You can order whatever you want off of these people's websites and they will bring it to you the next week. And I will that say is, to you, if we had that information, we would act on it. What do you mean if you had that information? We, Everyone knows who they are. That you, you guys have, you, they have had USDA inspectors at their, at their buildings. They have, most of these people have had that. And I, you're not, and you're I, I don't know, I mean, you're, I don't know who you're speaking about and I don't, if I knew who you were talking about, yeah, we could do something about that and, and hope to gain voluntary compliance with, with the people. So you're, you're, saying all, you're saying all of these other businesses that have been operating for four or five years, long, way longer than that, I've been doing this for three years, that you haven't acted on them, but you're acting on me, when I haven't even ever sold that meat on my website. And these, I have never, that meat has never, that custom meat, has never ever been sold on my website. Not once ever. These people have been selling that meat for, I don't know, five, 10 years, and they have never had any issue. So I, look, I don't think you guys are stupid. I don't think you think I'm stupid. I, I know stupid. this is I, I, specifically targeted harassment against my business. And I know you guys are just following orders from whoever's telling you, but this is, this is not. We came here with the state, we saw some product that we believe to be a violation, we misbranded, we took action on it. That's why we're here. As far as these other businesses, I don't know what businesses you're talking about. If I knew, I would send people out to deal with that. I mean, I'm not here just to- You guys, you guys let companies like ButcherBox sell <laughs> agrochemical feedlot meat and say it's pasture raised. You guys let these big businesses, my competitors, sell shit meat with ridiculous marketing and labeling that they think is the same quality as my meat. You allow that type of stuff to happen. If they are misbranding product or selling misbranded product, we will deal with that. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you factually, that's, if we have- You wrote the rules, what do you mean? You wrote the rules for those people to make, to sell shitty feedlot agrochemical based estrogenic meat that turns boys into girls. You literally wrote the rules so they can make money. You have no problem with that, but you have a problem with this, and you also have no problem with the... Oh, I know, you guys know very well, I don't think you guys are stupid, I think you know very well every single one of these businesses. I think you know every single one of them and what they do, and you're allowing them to do it, but you're not allowing me to do it. Because I'm not part of the club. That's, why, that's exactly what I think is happening. We enforce the rules and regulations evenly across the board. We don't give people special That is, no, that, I we mean, don't I don't... give people special exemptions. We don't regulate one from different. You're regulated as much as the biggest of the big. And then that, I mean... I, I, look, I, I've spoken to slaughterhouse consultants, I've spoken to USDA consultants, and every single one of them was shocked at how this procedure went initially with six police officers, the sheriff, five inspectors. They, they, every single part of this was not not even close to equal treatment okay not it's that's that's a ridiculous statement to make well again frankie the origination of this didn't stem from the usda the origination of this incident stemmed from the state when the state attempted to come and do a visit with your business and you denied them 
then the state chose to you know, get a search warrant. The state notified us. We accompanied them as we'd never been here before, and you're selling uh, meat and poultry products that we regulate. That's how we became involved. Look, I, I, look, I don't mean to get angry, you guys. I understand you guys are just doing your job, but you're going to tell me that seven, you're going to release me 1,700 pounds of meat for my personal use? We don't have a lot of options here. I mean, the regulations allow personal use, volunteer destruction, or we can move to seizure. Right? I mean, that's kind of where we're at. We detain the products. By law, we only have 20 days to keep your products detained. So after the 20 days, that's, we by the, law have what, to go. What to am I going to do with 1,700 pounds of, of product intended for my customers for personal use? That's the, essentially the same thing as destroying it. You do understand that, right? You do acknowledge that. What am I going to do with 1,700 pounds of product? I mean, you can give it to non paying guests, non paying, you know, your employees, your family. Your friends. I, if I went, if I drove down to the middle of Manhattan tomorrow on the street and tried to give away that meat, I probably couldn't even do it. Who's going to take a frozen sausage in, in in any weather and bring it home? You can't even give it away. And, and I'm, we're not saying you need to take it home today. You know, if you want to leave it here under personal use and, and take a little bit, little bit, little bit, whatever you got to do, as long as that product's segregated, you're not offering it for sale, you're not selling it, so on and so forth. Yeah, we're fine with that. You know, as long as you're saying yes, I'm going to use is, it my personal this the, use. Is this the final decision on this product? The, the final decision, as far as what we allow for custom or the disposition. Those three options you just gave me—that's the final decision that on the is, product. Those are your options. That's what I'm. I'm trying to relay to you. You can tell us because it's, it's essentially a voluntary disposition you're giving us, saying yes, I'll use it for personal use, or I'll destroy it, or I'll just simply let it remain under detention. So, so th this, go goes, I mean, this goes against everything I've been told about the private membership association. It's, and it honestly sounds like, as I said, you guys are singling me out and making up rules along the way. Um, and, and that's not the intent. You know, we're certainly not making up rules as we go along. I mean, I, you gave me information. I, I respect you enough that I want to get you a legitimate answer on the information you provided, which I did. Um, and, and as far as enforcing the rules fairly and equitably, that's what we do every day. Are, I mean, are, you sure, are your supervisors and the people at the USDA okay with knowing that you guys are gonna get a lot of flack for me shutting down my business? Shutting down your business is well, well, look, when I, shut, when I shut down my business in a few months because of harassment like this and being singled out, you guys know that people are gonna know the truth about what happened. And my customers and these people don't like they don't like government regulation. So th this really specific issue where you have all of these other businesses where my customers have probably been purchasing from too, doing the exact same thing and you're saying I can't do it, it's, it's not really a good look. It's not. I, I understand that and, and I get that. All I can tell you is we are enforcing the rules. In, so, in your so, case the amount of, so in my case of the small business, I'm guessing the amount of money I spend on USDA inspected meat every week isn't really surmountable for them to care enough to keep me in business. I mean, you're, compared to the other competitors. You can buy from whomever you want. It, it's not as though we get the money at USDA. I'm not, I'm not, th this doesn't have to be explained. The, pe the people you guys are taking orders from are the same people that operate the, the businesses that I'm in competition with that don't want me operating my business. It's pretty simple. I understand you guys are here to follow the rules and, and just convey the information to me. I understand you guys are, are just the messengers. And but I tell you, we have about 7,500, give or take, federal establishments, most of which are small to very small establishments. Yes, and I all the, the we said majority. this last Friday, every single one of those cocksuckers I did business with stole money and stole meat from me. Uh, which I, I don't know anything if I, about. I go, I go to this guy that I had this custom meat at, you know, and I pay him whatever, whatever your, whatever your, Federally inspected facilities are going to charge me. It'd be double. Would you pay twenty dollars a pound for sausage? Because that's what I'd have to charge getting it from those guys I, if they after they steal the meat and overcharge me for it. I, if you want to resell product, that product needs to be USDA inspected and passed, right? I mean, it, it's to yes, me, but I, as I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to say it one last time. All of these companies have been selling that type of meat with less strict adherence to these rules and regulations than I was going to do. 
So you're saying, I can't do it. They've been doing it for five years. I don't believe you're being truthful in, in that you would have, I think these people are in ties with whoever you're taking orders from. I've been nothing what, but open and honest with you that the few days I've known you, right? Um, and and you, I, understand look, I understand you guys don't think I'm stupid, right? You're not stupid. Do you think I'm smart? I, I think you're How a smart How smart guy. do you think I am? I think you know what you're doing. I think you're a smart guy. I mean, you're in business. You've had this for three yeah. years. You so are, are you guys free friends or the people you take orders from free friends? No. Yeah, I know you can't talk about I'm, it. I'm not a person. And you if know someone's what a in their private life, that's, I, I, I don't Yeah, so, okay, that answers my question. So I think this meeting is over. Um, you can go tell your friends and buddies uh, what we spoke about here and that I understand that don't like it when other people try to run businesses they want everything to themselves I understand how it is okay I get it I'll shut down in a few months I'm done with the harassment so whatever you guys want to release or do today that's fine um, if, if if there's you can go back if you want to go back to them and, and talk about the meat from the then uh, that's okay if you want to just release it for my personal use so I can label it and get it stored in a box that says not for sale that's fine too is that what you want to do? You want that final stuff released back to you on a personal use? No, I would prefer if you can go back to them and, and get a reconsideration on that product. Because that product is what's going to determine whether I keep my business operational or not. Because it's not, I mean, I can't really take another $20,000 hit, but now if I know that the USDA is going to be ordering meat from me every week for my business and scrutinizing every single thing I've been doing under the guise that you're taking orders from those people that don't want me in business, What's the point? I can literally, I can be on, this time next year, I'm going to be in South Beach, Miami, having fun, not dealing with this nonsense. Yeah, there's a lot of businesses that are going to lose money that I'm not spending money on. The $10,000 a week in shipping, $10,000 a month in coolers, $20,000 a week in USDA inspected meat. But I'm going to have the biggest smile on my face when I'm done paying all of these cocksuckers. Because I don't care about money, and they do, okay? And that's what I'm going to do, okay? So I've had enough of this. So... As far as disposition, you want us to leave it under detention then? I mean, are you I'm going to, are, are you, confused. I'm asking, are you able to get a second reconsideration on the product or that's it? No, this, this was it. I mean, it was, it was, we had enough information to make a decision. We were here to relay that decision. To so you're me. telling me it either needs to be released to me, destroyed, or, uh, we can leave it under detention. So, uh, so you can send someone down to destroy it? Wednesday will be day 20. Wednesday, we're required to file paperwork to seize the product. So, when the product is seized, what do they just come in and take it? There's, they could leave it in place. There's a, a, a bunch of different. Do things. they make an appointment? No, it'll be U.S. Marshals. If if the court okay's the seizure, they'll have U.S. Marshals come and seize the product. And if I say, okay, I want you re to release it to me, and then I sell it anyway. That's a separate issue. That's a, that's a criminal issue. It is. Okay. Can the meat be sold or not sold? But you guys are saying I can't send it to the shares to my customers that paid for the animal. Can they pick up the meat? No. Because no. that's I mean that's essentially selling. So I mean, you the, just said so they, the they, meat. They, no. So you're saying that I cannot ship the meat as distribution of the shares in the private membership association. I also cannot have people pick it up. Correct, because they are customers. They want, they're buying meat at that point. Okay, that's fine. You can, release, you can release the product, I'll label it not for sale and I'll keep it in some boxes. For your personal use. You said nine, and it'll say on the form. Yeah, I'll eat three pounds of hot dogs a day for five years. That's how long it would take. Uh, you, person who use non-paying guests, family, friends, all non-paying. I mean, that's, that's what we're telling you. Uh, yeah, you're, but you're coming into a small business and saying that I need to now give away 1,700 pounds of meat. That's not like, it's not like you just call up a few people. And, that's a lot of meat. I would have to literally, it would literally be a full-time job for like a week or two for me to get rid of that meat, even just giving it away. You think people take meat from strangers on the street? I, I don't. 
but I, we don't have any other option. I mean, the person who uses this is, it's your product, you've purchased it, you, you own the animals, we're trying to do the right thing and let you use that product for your personal use. That's where we're at. So what's, what's the reason you don't harass these other people that are selling non-fairly inspected meat at, on retail? You just don't know where their base is, where their location is? We do do that every day, all day. If, if we talk specific scenarios or specific custom companies, specific stores, then yes, we will follow up. We follow up on complaints every day. Especially here All right, I've, he I've heard enough. I don't want to get any more upset. So we can we can do the paperwork to release the product, and we can wrap this up. All right.